Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today's video is all about white ties. I discuss the do's and don'ts, what to wear, what not to wear, so you don't embarrass yourself and look the part. White tie is the most formal dress code a man can wear in the Western Hemisphere, and unfortunately, most men get it wrong and the attention is all about the details because the outfit is very defined by the dress code of it and it's very limited in what you can do and change. First of all, it consists of a tailcoat, which I'm wearing here right now. It's different than any other garment. Even a morning coat is technically a tailcoat, but the evening tailcoat is cut differently. It also has a pair of trousers with a double galon. It's high-waisted, it's worn with a white, Marcella cotton waistcoat, either single-breasted or double-breasted. It's one with a stiff front shirt and with shirt cuffs that are stiff and not doubled, but single. Of course, always worn with cufflinks. On top of that, you have a detachable collar. You have a white bow tie. In this case, I'm wearing a single-end bow tie from Fort Belvedere. And of course, you can't miss the top hat. This is a silk plush top hat and it's vintage. Silk plush is not produced anymore, and so you can't get this kind of a quality top hat. Of course, if you're not into the top hat, you can skip that too, because in this day and age, it's not required anymore, but it is a nice touch, and there are not too many events where you can still wear it. First, let's discuss white tie don'ts. One, don't wear slippers. Now, they may look very similar to opera pumps, also known as court shoes, and they have this bow, they're made out of patent leather. The difference between a pair of slippers and opera pumps is the vamp. On a slippers, it comes up all the way. On a opera pump, it's much further down. The reason you want opera pumps with a deep cutout is so you can see your nice silk socks. Two, do not wear a obviously fake boutonniere. A boutonniere is a lapel flower and it's almost obligatory for a white tie ensemble. You can get away without it, but since it's a celebratory event, it really looks much better. Traditionally, a carnation is probably the most popular choice, but you can basically wear anything that you like. Whenever I went on cruises and wore formal evening wear, I wanted to wear boutonnieres and on the ship they didn't have the right selection, and so I decided to design my own. You can find over 40 of them in our shop, and I'm wearing one of them here right now. They look very authentic, and the great thing is they will never wilt. They're all handmade in Germany, and you can find out more about the whole process in this video here. Three, do not wear a necktie. A necktie is only appropriate for a business suit, but never for either black tie or white tie ensembles. You will sometimes see it in Hollywood, but they just don't know what they're doing, and you should never ever add a regular necktie to a tailcoat or white tie ensemble. Four, don't wear a regular suit. If the invitation states full fig, white tie, or formal attire, and white tie is required, you need a tailcoat. Don't just go with a black suit and a regular jacket or a morning coat, both would be wrong. The tailcoat for the evening is the only acceptable option. Five, do not wear a white or off-white dinner jacket. A dinner jacket is appropriate for black tie events with a black bow tie. Wearing a white bow tie with a dinner jacket is simply wrong. Six, do not wear a regular tuxedo if the invitation states white tie. Simply either invest in a full ensemble, which can be difficult, maybe even rent it. If the invitation states white tie and you're at the opera ball in Vienna, you have to show up in full fig which means no smoking jacket, no tuxedo, no dinner jacket, no black tie. It has to be a white tie. Seven, do not wear spats with evening wear. Sometimes vintage lovers love to wear spats because it makes them different. It helps to change the look of their shoes. But traditionally, it was something that was reserved for morning wear. As such, it's perfectly fine with a morning coat, but not with an evening tailcoat. Eight, do not wear black shirts. The only acceptable shirt for a white tie ensemble is either a Marcella Piquet front that is stiff or a boil front that is likewise stiff. You don't want soft pleats and you don't want anything other than plain white. Nine, do not wear a designer's name or label visibly on your clothing. Sometimes people get these little tags on the end of their sleeve. They want to show off, but it's quite gaudy and you should always remove it if it's on the sleeve. You don't want any designer names that are visible 
for anyone to see. 10. Do not wear wristwatches with white tie. Back in the day, it was impolite to look at your watch when in company because it would imply that you have better things to do than being with a person right then and there. Later on, watches became acceptable. However, you would either wear a pocket watch on a chain or on a chatelaine, which was a little fob and you would have your pocket watch in your waistcoat pocket and a fob would hang down as a little decorative element. A wristwatch was something that was quite informal and as such, it's not appropriate with that very formal white tie ensemble. 11. Do not wear a studless shirt and don't skip the bow tie. As you can see here, the shirt is stiff fronted and has little decorative studs that are exchangeable and it just is the perfect way to highlight a white tie ensemble. For black tie, you have the option to go without studs, even though it looks better with them. For white tie, you have to go with studs. There is no alternative. 12. Do not wear a morning coat. Even though a morning coat is also a tail coat, and sometimes people can't distinguish between the two, a morning coat has basically one continuous line that is cut away. That's why it's also known as the cutaway. 30. Do not wear a cummerbund with a white tie ensemble. Cummerbunds are not appropriate with white tie. They're okay for black tie, but for white tie, you always wear a waistcoat or a vest, as it's known to Americans. Back in the day, servers would wear black waistcoats and the non-servants would wear white waistcoats. Back in the day, if you went to a funeral in the evening, you could wear a tailcoat with a black mourning waistcoat. Today, people hardly ever wear white tie anymore, and especially not for funerals. So it's basically a relic of the past. 14. Do not wear notched lapels on your evening tailcoat. Notched lapels are always less formal than peaked lapels, and because it's the most formal garment in classic menswear, you can only have peaked lapels. 15. Make sure your shirt doesn't come untucked with a white tie ensemble. Unlike a regular suit, white tie generally has a lot more details and therefore you'll also find lots more latches and buttons that make sure everything stays in place. The stiff shirt front makes it more likely for your shirt to come untucked, especially when you sit and you get back up. For that reason, there's a little latch that buttons into the front of your trousers, so it will always stay in place. 60. Do not wear waistcoats that are too long. Generally, it's a hallmark of someone who doesn't wear black tie very often to have a waistcoat that peeks out underneath the front of the evening tailcoat. Proper people like Prince Philip or royalty in England gets that right. People like George Bush or Obama get it wrong. Having that little extra fabric just screams, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just wearing this because I have to. So now that you know what not to wear with white tie, here are a few better examples. One, do wear a pocket watch. It's a nice accessory, it has a vintage touch to it and it's just much more fun than having a wristwatch. Two, do show some shirt cuff. Traditionally, you can show anywhere from nothing to almost an inch of shirt cuff. It really depends on personal preference and to learn more about it, check out our sleeve length guide here. Three, wear a beautiful boutonniere and a top hat. Boutonnieres just upgrade every outfit and particularly white tie. A top hat can only be worn with a tailcoat that is long because it's long on top and long at the bottom. Since there are not too many options, I suggest you always go for one if you can get your hands on one that fits you. Four, wear your white tie ensemble with confidence. If you're not happy with the way you look and you're embarrassed, it will show and it will ruin the entire look of your ensemble. Wear it, have fun, and be confident. Five, wear an evening overcoat and pair it with gloves and a nice silk scarf in the winter. When it's cold outside, you don't just want to show up in your tailcoat, you want to have an evening overcoat. A pair of white gloves and a white silk scarf just round out the entire outfit and underline the black and white scheme of white tie. For a selection of white gloves and scarves for the evening, please check out our shop here. Six, wear an evening waistcoat. Most waistcoats you can find these days are just white waistcoats that are modified from a standard day wear pattern. However, an evening waistcoat is distinctly different in the sense that it has a much deeper cutout so it can show your shirt front and the shirt studs. On top of that, it has a little tab that buttons into your trousers so it won't come loose and it is backless so you don't sweat. Seven, wear patent leather evening shoes. The only option you have is 
either a hole cut Oxford or a capless Oxford in either black patent leather or black calfskin leather. Personally, I prefer patent leather because it's shinier and more suited to evening wear. If you want to make your outfit more unique, I suggest to go with court shoes or opera pumps because there's not really another chance to wear these kind of shoes other than with a white tie or maybe with a black tie, but they highlight your socks, they're easy to dance with, and they just go really well with a white tie ensemble. Now that you know everything about the most formal of all evening wears, white tie, make sure to check out black tie because in this day and age, black tie is still a lot more relevant. I'm wearing a white tie evening shirt with a detachable wing collar that sits behind my bow tie. I'm having shirt studs in there. I'm having a single breasted white tie waistcoat. It's a vintage one and it's backless. I'm wearing cufflinks that are mother of pearl and palladium simply because for evening wear, you usually go with a white metal such as white gold, platinum or palladium. My shoes are opera pumps in patent leather with a black bow. The bow tie I'm wearing is a single end bow tie from Fort Belvedere. It's the regular full-size butterfly bow tie. If you like smaller ones or if you are a shorter guy, you should go with the smaller bow tie. This one is a little more unique because it has one layer of fabric. You can also have a regular double end bow tie and we show you how to tie both of them in our videos here. Otherwise, my pants have a very high rise. That way the waistcoat doesn't have to come too far down to cover the waistband and thus it doesn't peek out from underneath my tailcoat, which is exactly the way it should be. For socks, I'm wearing black silk socks from Fort Belvedere, which you can find in our shop. And the pants have a double side galon that is braided, which is very elegant and distinctly reserved for white tie. For black tie, you can have a single side strip, which is also known as galon. The tailcoat and the pants are actually vintage from the 1960s from Husmüller in München. The tailcoat was actually not made for me, but it is a vintage piece that was tailored in 1960 by Husmüller in Munich, Germany. I've worn it for my wedding and whenever there's a white tie event, I'll still take it out because I really enjoy wearing it and it fits me quite well. Now, if you're in the market for a white tie ensemble, I suggest you have it custom made if you can't afford it, try to go vintage because any new reproductions are not gonna cut it. If you wanna get videos like this right to your inbox, please sign up.